Biopower, Wikipedia article audio. Biopower is a term coined by French scholar, historian, and social theorist Michel Foucault. It relates to the practice of modern nation-states and their regulation of their subjects through an explosion of numerous and diverse techniques for achieving the subjugations of bodies and the control of populations. Foucault first used the term in his lecture courses at the Collège de France, but the term first appeared in print in The Will to Knowledge, Foucault's first volume of the history of sexuality. In Foucault's work, it has been used to refer to practices of public health, regulation of heredity, and risk regulation, among many other regulatory mechanisms often linked less directly with literal physical health. It is closely related to a term he uses much less frequently, but which subsequent thinkers have taken up independently, biopolitics. For Foucault, Biopower is a technology of power for managing humans in large groups, the distinctive quality of this political technology is that it allows for the control of entire populations. It refers to the control of human bodies through an anatomopolitics of the human body and biopolitics of the population through societal disciplinary institutions. Initially imposed from outside whose source remains elusive to further investigation both by the social sciences and the humanities, and in fact, you could argue will remain elusive as long as both disciplines use their current research methods. Modern power, according to Foucault's analysis, becomes encoded into social practices as well as human behavior as the human subject gradually acquiesces to subtle regulations and expectations of the social order. It is an integral feature and essential to the workings of and makes possible the emergence of the modern nation-state, capitalism, etc. Biopower is literally having power over bodies, it is an explosion of numerous and diverse techniques for achieving the subjugation of bodies and the control of populations. Foucault elaborates further in his lecture courses on biopower entitled Security, Territory, Population delivered at the Collège de France between January and April 1978. Foucault's Conception Milieu Interreur it relates to governmental concerns of fostering the life of the population, an anatomopolitics of the human body a global mass that is affected by overall characteristics specific to life, like birth, death, production, illness, and so on. It produces a generalized disciplinary society and regulatory controls through biopolitics of the population. In his lecture Society Must Be Defended, Foucault examines biopolitical state racism, and its accomplished rationale of myth-making and narrative. Here he states the fundamental difference between biopolitics and discipline. Foucault argues that the previous Greco-Roman, medieval rule of the Roman Emperor, the divine right of kings, absolute monarchy, and the Pope's model of power and social control over the body was an individualizing mode. However, after the emergence of the medieval metaphor body politic which meant society as a whole with the ruler, in this case the king, as the head of society with the so-called estates of the realm and the medieval Roman Catholic Church next to the monarch with the majority of the peasant population or feudal serfs at the bottom of the hierarchical pyramid. This meaning of the metaphor was then codified into medieval law for the offense of high treason and if found guilty the sentence of hanged, drawn, and quartered was carried out. However, this was drastically altered in 18th century Europe with the advent and realignment of modern political power as opposed to the ancient world and medieval version of political power. The mass democracy of the liberal Western world and the voting franchise was added to the mass population, liberal democracy and political parties, universal adult suffrage exclusively male at this time, then extended to women in Europe in 1929 
and extending to people of African descent in America in 1964. The emergence of the human sciences and its subsequent direction, during the 16th and 18th centuries, primarily aimed at the modern Western man and the society he inhabits, aided the development of disciplinary institution and furthermore, Foucault cites the human sciences, particularly the medical sciences, led to the advent of an atomopolitics of the human body, a biopolitics and biohistory of man. A transition occurred through forcible removal of various European monarchs into a scientific state apparatus and the radical overhaul of judiciary practices coupled with the reinvention and division of those who were to be punished. A second mode for seizure of power was developed as a type of power that was stochastic and massifying rather than individualizing. By massifying Foucault means transforming into a population, with an extra added impetus of a governing mechanism in the form of a scientific machinery and apparatus. This scientific mechanism which we now know as the state governs less of the population and concentrates more on administrating external devices. Foucault then reminds us that this anatomo biopolitics of the body and the population correlates with the new founded knowledge of sciences and the new politics of modern society, masquerading as liberal democracy where life itself became not only a deliberate political strategy but an economic, political, and scientific problem, both for the mathematical sciences and the biological sciences coupled together with the nation-state. Foucault argues that nation-states, police, government, legal practices, human sciences, and medical institutions have their own rationale, cause and effects, strategies, technologies, mechanisms, and codes and have managed successfully in the past to obscure their workings by hiding behind observation and scrutiny. Foucault insists social institutions such as governments, laws, religion, politics, social administration, monetary institutions, Military institutions cannot have the same rigorous practices and procedure with claims to independent knowledge like those of the human and hard sciences, such as mathematics, chemistry, astronomy, physics, genetics, and the biology. Foucault sees these differences in techniques as nothing more than behavior control technologies and modern biopower is nothing more than a series of webs and networks working its way around the societal body. However, Foucault argues the exercise of power in the service of maximizing life carries a dark underside. When the state is invested in protecting the life of the population, when the stakes are life itself, anything can be justified. Groups identified as the threat to the existence of the life of the nation or of humanity can be eradicated with impunity. Foucault concentrates his attention on what he calls the major political and social project namely the milieu interior. How did the project milieu become interwoven into the political and social relations of men? Foucault takes as his starting point from the 16th century right up until the 18th century with the milieu culminating into the founding disciplines of science, mathematics, political economy, and statistics. Foucault makes an explicit point on the value of secrecy of government coined by Jean Bowden, which, according to Foucault, had to be incorporated into a politics of truth. Foucault argues, in referring to the term public opinion the concept of truth refers to the term regimes of truth. Where Foucault also mentions a group called the ideologues where the term ideology first appears and is taken from. It is through regimes of truth Foucault argues that raison d'etat archives its political and biological success. Here the modern version of government is presented to the population in the national media both in the electronic medium television and radio and especially in the written press, 
as the modicum of efficiency, fiscal optimization, political responsibility, and fiscal rigorousness. Thus, a public discourse of government solidarity emerges and social consensus is emphasized through these four points. What general components were essential and necessary to make this consensus happen? Foucault traces the first dynamics, the first historical dimensions belonging to the early Middle Ages. While Foucault does not mention him by name, one major thinker which forms a parallel with Foucault's own work, the medieval historian Ernst Cantoroas who gets a brief mention here. Cantoroas mentions a medieval device known as the body politic. This medieval device was so well received by legal theorists and lawyers of the day that it was incorporated and codified into medieval society and institutions. Cantoroas also refers to the gloss satyr s belonging to a well-known branch of legal schools in medieval Europe, experts in jurisprudence and law science, appeal of treason, the Lord's Appellant and the commentaries of jurist Edmund Plowden and his Plowden reports. In Cantoroas' analysis, a medieval political theology emerged throughout the Middle Ages which provided the modern basis for the democratization of the hereditary succession of a wealthy elite and for our own modern political hierarchical order and their close association with the wealthy nobility. Namely, the democratization of sovereignty, which is known in modern political terms as liberal democracy. According to Cantoro as a medieval triumvirate appears, a private enterprise of wealth and succession reserved exclusively for the nobility and their descendants, and the monarch and her slash his heirs. Cooperation was needed by the three groups the monarchy, the church, and the nobility in an uneasy medieval alliance and at times, it appeared fractious. Throughout its history, it was never a smooth arrangement, See Baron's War. What is the reasoning behind the whole population subservience with the worshipping of state emblems, symbols, and related mechanisms with their associates who represent the institutional mechanism, where fierce loyalty from the population is presented, in modern times as universal admiration for the president, the monarch, the pope, and the prime minister? One could argue is it irony or fierce logic that dictates this sort of behavior? Well, which one is it? Foucault would argue that while all the cost benefits were met by the new founded urban population in the form of production and political power that it is precisely this type of behavior which keeps the well-oiled machine smoothly ticking over and ultimately giving the nation-state not only its rationale but its governing less impenetrable apparatus. In other words, it is dictated by our own inherited political rationality which gives the false impression and appearance of joint solidarity giving the machine not only legitimacy but an air of invincibility from its main primary sources, reason, truth, freedom, and human existence. Foucault makes special note on the biological naturalness of the human species and the new founded scientific interest that was developing around not only with the species' interaction with milieu and technology, but most importantly, technology operating as system not as so often portrayed by the political and social sciences which insisted on technology operating as social improvement. Both milieu, natural sciences, and technology, allied with the characteristics surrounding social organization and increasingly the categorization of the sciences to help deal with this naturalness of milieu and of the inscription of truth onto nature. Due to Foucault's discussions with Georges Kang Gillam, Foucault notices that not only was milieu now a newly discovered scientific biological naturalness ever present in Lamarckian biology the notion was actually invented and imported from Newtonian mechanics via Georges Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon due to Buffon mentorship and friendship with Jean-Baptiste Lamarck and used by biology in the middle of the 18th century borrowing from Newton the explanatory model of an organic reaction through 
The Action of Milieu Newtonian Physics Used by Isaac Newton and the Newtonians Humans were now both the object of this newly discovered scientific and natural truth and new categorization, but subjected to it allied by laws, both scientific and natural law, the state's mode of governmental rationality to the will of its population. But, most importantly, interaction with the social environment and social interactions with others and the modern nation-state's interest in the population's well-being and the destructive capability that the state possess in its armory and it was with the group who called themselves the economists who continued with the rationalization of this naturalness. Foucault notices that this naturalness continues and is extended further with the advent of 18th century political society with the new founded implement population and their association with raison d'etat. Sources <laughs>